Welcome everyone. I'm glad to have you again for this month's edition of From Enemies and Strangers to Friends, Overcoming Cultural Divides and Differences. As you know, I've been doing this for a few months now. Sometimes I talk by uh, just myself. Sometimes I do interviews. Last month I interviewed Per Saxegard, who was the founder of the Business for Peace Foundation in Oslo, Norway, and an investment banker himself. Uh, about how business can foster peace and overcome cultural divides. This month, we're returning to music, which I talked about a couple of months ago on my own, but I am delighted to welcome three great friends and colleagues who have been collaborating together on notions of business, uh, music, and peace, uh, very ideas of over using cultural artifacts to overcome cultural divides. We've worked together for about three years, and I'd like to give you a quick introduction to my friends and welcome them aboard and look forward to our conversation, which we have had many, many of. You get to just listen in this time around. So uh, to start off, I'd like to introduce Carolyn Calloway Thomas. Carolyn is the chair of the African American and Africa Diaspora Studies Community uh, uh, Department here at Indiana University. She has published many, many books, is a campus leader, uh, an activist, and really, what, what I, I have to say that when uh, at, in my work at the Kelly School of Business, we are adding a, 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 an addition to our course that looks specifically at diversity and inclusion. And I went around campus, I identified people that I really needed to talk to. Carolyn is one of those people that I really needed to talk to, and I'm sure glad that I did because I, I just sat spellbound uh, by her as she as she talked about her experiences her insights and so she's a i'm, I'm glad to have her with us today uh, alian barker is a senior lecturer of music at the jacobs school of music he also is the director of the music entrepreneurship and career development program so he really brought, has brought a really interesting energy and insight to our work on music business and peace because he's, a, he's got feet in both areas. I mean, he's talking about music. He's a, he's a uh, classical musician himself. And he also has that entrepreneurship anchor into this as well. And he has been able to relate, you know, different kinds of cultural artifacts in a really unique and often provocative way. He also serves a, as a faculty affiliate on our Center for Rural Engagement here at Indiana University, which is an effort to you know, engage with the rural communities that are in Southern Indiana around Indiana, Indiana University, which I think is a re I grew up on a farm. I grew up on a farm in Western Illinois. And I think that this idea of universities engagement with rural areas is just fabulous. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, he does that um, on a regular basis and has new grants that he has received on that and really does excellent work on this area. And then finally, finally Connie, Connie Glenn. Uh, Connie was my start in talking about this idea of music business and peace because I've been doing business and peace for quite a while. And when I got to Indiana University, I started to take some courses in music because I had some music background myself really enjoyed them and realized that I needed to, you know, increase my knowledge of some basic music theory things that I left about 40 years ago. But in order to get uh, approved for that, I had to um, talk to the per person who was the director of the general studies program at the Jacobs School of Music, which Connie is, as well as being a senior lecturer at the Jacobs School of Music. And it turns out she teaches a course called The Music of War and Peace. Well, we were off to the races in a second, and uh, we have co-edited a book that is coming out uh, on this subject, and uh, Connie and I have endless conversations, and I always end up more fired up than when I started. And so, I mean, she has great insight on these notions of overcoming, um, you know, th this notion of strangers or friends or overcoming cultural divides. She's also a Jacobs School representative on the, the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, so she really brings an interesting insight and a profound insight and history and experience into these issues as well. So I welcome all of you here. We're gonna have a fun conversation and I have a few questions to get us started. Uh, the first one, and for those of you who have been following along on this vlog, you may remember that a couple of months ago, I said that one of the exercises that I do with my students is that I ask them to identify a piece of music that puts them in different psychological states of mind. It's kind of a, of a riff on Lawrence Kohlberg's uh, Six Stages of Moral Development. And so, and I like to give them that so that they have a piece of music that they can think of that if they realize that they're not quite in the right mindset, they can listen to it and help us get there. 
So I thought I would ask my, my group here today of what songs that they might have that would put them a different psychological state of mind. It can range from competitiveness to friendship or a sense of transcendence. But to, to get us started, what would be a song that you have that you would say that puts you in a state of mind of, of, of being friendly, you know, having friendship or a state of mind of having a, a step back, a step of perspective of what life is about. Um, just what are your thoughts? It'd be interesting to what songs that, that this illustrious group comes up with. Carolyn, you wanna go ahead and start? Go ahead, Carolyn. Well, one of the songs that really moves me greatly is um, a song by by Gold. What, Thank you for being a friend. And I love that song primarily because it's a thankful song. The other reason that I love it is because it is a generational song. It means thank you for being a friend, not just today, not just yesterday, but also in the future. And I also like the fact that the song has passages built into it. And it takes into consideration how we mature. For example, it talks about, you know, even if you have gray hair, even if you have difficulty walking, that's the implication of it. I still thank you for being a friend. So that's one that I really do love and, and cherish. Okay, great. Connie? You know, it's very hard for me to come up with one song. And what I ended up doing was thinking, well, the songs from my youth are the ones that speak to me very strongly about friendship. And some of them have friend in the title. You've got a friend, James Taylor. Um, and others that to me were comforting. You must have a friend if there's a bridge over troubled waters, right? And then maybe going along with what Carolyn has said, um, Stevie Wonder's Songs in the Key of Life, to me is every decade, <laughs> every point of our lives. Um, but there's so many in the popular music repertoire that you can look at because the poetry is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, in My Life by the Beatles is another Songs in the Key of Life type um idea and uh imagine another mm -hmm. another song that really speaks to us about what could be possible if there were no barriers mm -hmm. and it of course is talking about imagine a war a world without war but you can also apply that to imagine a world where we can all be friends um, so those were things that I came up with. I mean, I have plenty of classical music examples as well. I started thinking chamber music, some of my closest friendships. So of course it was all about what I had experienced. Um, some of my closest friendships came through chamber music experiences. And I suspect every classical music uh, per, uh, performer would say something similar. Beethoven sonatas, so much give and take. Um, and that's what friendship is about, right? Mm -hmm. So many, many, many responses, because um, I couldn't decide on one, but. That's okay. Alan? Oh, what a great conversation. And, and both Carolyn and, and Connie have come up with such um, ideas of what it is, you know, to to share friendship. And, and I think like Connie, I sort of, I, I, I sort of allowed uh, my my past to sort of come to the surface once again, because I think that our formative experiences very often create the sort of the most powerful memories in, in our lives. And having grown up in South Africa and having gone through the whole apartheid and then post-apartheid world and sense of community around that, um, I've um, been very, very drawn to the music of Johnny Clegg who is a, um, actually was born in, in England, but spent most of his, his life in South Africa, became heavily influenced by traditional African music and actually um, studied and sort of all completely immersed himself and then became one of the, um, um, the, the sort of the, the iconic uh, musicians of South Africa across the board, um, you know, in, in all walks of life. And uh, created some incredible um, groups that I was growing up with. When I was growing up, I sort of heard about this group called Savuka that he came up with. And, 
And there's a piece of music of his that um, that I've, I've I've really sort of reflected on a lot over the last 15 or so years. And whenever I hear it, it creates a sense of community, a sense of, 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 of belonging, a sense of sharing, a sense of love. And what's interesting about it for me is that it's almost like a it's a it's, it's a way of 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 understanding the world that's greater than yourself, um, mm-hmm. and and the 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 song itself is called Africa, um, and in the it's a it's basically a sort of a very poetic reflection on what it is and what Africa has gone through, um, and in the middle there's a there's a there's an area that he says something over and over and over again which is in in Tosa, and it's it's um, Africa Bukala Banguele, which is basically Africa is crying. Uh, for the people, and it's sort of like an ancestral recognition of of um, of our sense of, of of the greatness of the world, um, and it's become an anthem for a lot of people in South Africa. When they hear Johnny Clegg, they think of that song, and it's it's really quite amazing. Great, great. Those, those, those that's some those great selections there. Just to to throw in mine, since I'm not won't just uh, quiz all of you on the one that I picked when I uh, introduced it to my students is um, the, the theme from Friends, um, oh. I'll be there for you. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> that, that sentence just in itself of I'll be there for you, I think is just a wonderful capture of, of what friendship is about. Let's go to the, the other one. The other question that I uh, had posed of some, a, a, a song that would give, makes you take a, a step back, a perspective of life. Sometimes um, when I'm talking about these steps within the sports world, because I use a sports analogy as well as music, it's the view from the blimp, that you're, you're looking down from the blimp and looking at everything that's below you and it gives you a perspective of what's going on in the stadium and in City Hall and in the church and in the neighborhood and everything. So is there a song that, that you would say that gets you to take a deep breath and to step back from the world and to just think of what's happening right now? How about we go in reverse order this time, Alan? You want to start off? Sure. Again, you know, interesting. Connie, Connie brought up this um, reflection on what it is to be a musician, to be a performing musician, and how chamber music and um, participating in the creation of music itself is just such a powerful um, and deeply moving experience. And and um, I, I'd say that there are so many um, so many pieces of music that I've had the good fortune to actually play. Um, you know, in, in a chamber music setting or orchestral setting that has really given, again, the sense of awe and the sense of connection to the world and how, in a sense, music being, um, uh, you know, uh, representing through artistry human relations gives you an opportunity to experience them without the trappings and the habits that we create for ourselves um, in, say, for instance, a political discussion or you know, the idea of difference that is articulated through words and immersing yourself in the creation of music is is something that um, has really sort of just created the sense of awe about the world. Um, But I I should also go back to uh, one of those formative experiences. Uh, My sister was crazy about Bob Dylan. And um, as a classically trained musician, I thought, this guy sings out of tune. It's like, you know, (laughs) how can anybody take him seriously? And... um, and so I, I luckily sort of was able to listen a little bit more and fell in love with his singing um, when I was again growing up. And one of the songs that has stayed with me to this day is Forever Young, which is a sort of a prayer to a sense of companionship and sharing that I think is just incredibly, incredibly powerful. So that's my song. Okay, great. Bring you back around, Connie. Yeah, sure. Well, again, um... This question for me of what what puts you more into, I looked at it as a reflective state of mind. Um, I thought about, or what has you, as you said, take a step back, take a perspective, um, different kind of perspective on your life. There are several types of music that will put me into a trance in a minute. So Chick Corea and Keith Jarrett, solo piano, solo jazz piano, especially Keith Jarrett, but both of them turn it on late at night and I can become very introspective. It's, it's a really powerful thing. Same thing with Bach cello suites and violin partitas. It's, perhaps it's the solo instrument part of it 
or the silence that is around it, no words. So I'm turning inward, right? That's kind of what it does for me. Um, so those sets, I think the, the jazz solo piano and then the solo unaccompanied works by Bach. Bach is sort of <laughs> the proverbial, um, means something to everyone once you start really listening. That's kind of a remarkable musician. Um, there are, of course, other things. Gregorian chant does the same kind of thing. Some of the spirituals, I think, do the same thing. They do have words, but sometimes I feel like a motherless child puts me in another space entirely, right? Um, and isn't that kind of what we're looking for? Something that takes us out of ourselves. So again, several thoughts there. How about you, Carolyn? Well, when I was growing up in Bernice, Louisiana, a small town, a blink and it's gone kind of Southern town where people say hello and good morning. I always looked forward to the beginning of our school because it was at that moment that one of my favorite, favorite songs, Lift Every Voice and mm -hmm. Sing, echoed throughout the auditorium. We normally had assemblies where we would listen to poetry, listen to lectures, and do dramatic readings. But the one thing that I looked forward to was lift every voice and sing. And to this very, very moment, that song speaks to me like a sermon. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a song that has locked inside it the DNA of African American history. So every time I hear it, I think of the, the trauma. I think of the passages and I think of the emotions that African American people went through during the Middle Passage. But crucially, I think of the aspirational aspects of that song because that song buoyed me up and gave me faith and hope that I could do marvelous things. And so for me, as I said, it's, it's sermonic because when I think of it, I don't want to hear anyone say anything. I just want to hear voices singing. And I want those voices to be lifted as high as the voices can go. So in a sense, it's an autobiography for me because I can trace that song to what I was doing when I was in elementary school, when I was in high school, when I was in college, because every step of the way, we sang, lift every voice and sing. So that's my favorite. It's interesting, one of the common denominators that I've heard from each of you is the, um, a, a piece of music tied to a personal experience. And you know, sometimes it's the music itself that can evoke that or to kind of provide, that can lead you, provide the guidance to that. And sometimes maybe it doesn't have anything to do with the, with the, the message. Maybe there is no message to the music at all. It's just where you were at that particular time and place. Uh, example that I use with my students because they they kind of struggle with this exercise is that um, um, I went I, I went to college at Notre Dame it was the only school I applied to even though I'm not Catholic and <laughs> the first time that I my sister took me out to visit it um, and I drove down Notre Dame Avenue the song that was playing on the radio was the old disco song the hustle and the only thing it says is do the hustle. I mean, that's it. And then right. it's, it's a, I mean, it has nothing to do with higher education or anything, I suppose. Well, can you do the hustle? <laughs> I, but to me, every time that I hear that song, I see the Golden Dome at Notre Dame. There's no reason for that, except for that personal, when that was playing at that particular time. So, and you know, that's an interesting thing about music. I mean, it can, it can capture, it can lead you like, like you all were saying, there might be a specific lift up your voice and sing as there's a message into that that you can that you, you can hook onto or maybe it's just what you heard at a particular time and place and, and both of those are valid um, but and so that's one of the reasons that i think that music is so interesting to think of as a way to put us in different states of mind that might be a helpful way for us to interact with each other to recognize what state of mind that person might be in and to recognize what you might be in and to be able to come up with something that allows you to shift in a way that you can 
you can approach them or to you know, get a perspective yourself or think about friendship yourself and, and what that means. So these are great, great, um, great, great, great songs here, folks. Uh, well, let me move to the second question here. 2020 has been an interesting year. <laughs> Um, and it's been an interesting year in a whole bunch of different ways and with some cultural divides that have been building for a long time becoming much more obvious um, um, to many people anyway, maybe that they weren't aware of before and are more aware of now. And also with the, um, the coronavirus pandemic of putting us in different places where it's harder to in some ways reach out to each other. We can reach out in the way we are doing right now through this you know, video conferencing. Imagine what, what the life would have been if, if 30 years ago, if this is, yeah. and Absolutely. we didn't have these capabilities of having this kind of a conversation or teaching our classes. How would we have taught our classes at all hmm. 20, 25 years ago? And we, it's going to be a challenge when the four of us start here in two weeks, but it's a challenge that we can take on Right. Uh, as we didn't before, but still, there's something different about you know communicating over a computer screen as opposed to being with someone. Um, and so, uh, with that in mind, you know, my mind turns to well, what what are sources that we can can also access that helps us overcome those cultural divides. Um, whether it's through collaborations, participating in particular events, being parts of organization. And I was wondering how you th might think that music might play into that, how it might help us overcome those cultural divides through events, through collaborations, through organizations. I mean, what, what can we use music for to help us stay together or to be together better or more or more authentically? Um, so we'll spin around and do it the opposite way. Carolyn, you want to start us off this time? Yes, as I was, I was thinking of, of the question, I was thinking of how music could get us into public spaces, into the public square. So I'm imagining a multicultural musical event. I'm imagining a multicultural ethnic choir, mm. choirs that every town, every village, every hamlet would have. And that once per month, all of us, regardless of our ethnicity, regardless of our, our class, we could be plumbers, we could be electricians, we could do, be preachers or teachers, but once per month, all of us at the same time would go into the public square and just sing, just lift every voice and sing. Because I think our associational ties are very, very weak right now. And that would be one way for us to strengthen the bonds that um, cement our, our loveliness and our harmonies. And so music would be one way of capturing that. So once you get into the public square, you would have a conversation with another person. And that would be one way of ridding ourselves of this huge, concerning, depressing cultural divide. That's an idea I never thought of before. That's, that, that's a pretty interesting one. I like that. Okay. All right, Connie. A, a terrific idea, Carolyn. I, I love the thought that once a month we'll would drop everything else and commit to each other also. It seems to me that's part of it, that being part of a community. You know, it has, I think music has always provided a great deal of comfort and of inspiration. And when you ask this question, I immediately thought back to the Italians who were singing out of their windows mm -hmm. on the yes. streets yeah. at 6 p.m. every night. And then I know some New Yorkers did the same thing. But it, it was, again, actually, Carolyn, exactly what you're saying, getting a public square mentality, getting a community mentality through singing that they loved. Um, we've seen some fascinating things on the internet. We've seen concerts, we've seen galas, we've seen shows, we've seen single pieces performed. I just watched part of Carmina Burana with the Choral uh, Festival of Edinburgh. You know, there must be 250 singers all over the, uh, all over the continent, basically. 
were taking part. So there is a connection there mm -hmm. um, that is profound. And it's working because of our technology. And that is, you know, in reference to that earlier comment, I mean, what would we be doing if this were even 10 years ago? We did not have this at our fingertips. And now we have musicians accessing it uh, all over the place, just regardless of distance. And the other thought that I have, and I hope that this is beyond the music world, is that this is a very important time to reconnect with what is important to you. And for many people, they can do that through music. And then you share it with someone and it again creates that space. Um, so it is where the music itself has something that is important to you that all of us were talking about from our shared experiences or earlier youth experiences. So some of those ideas I think we've been seeing and we should build on them, right? Be more intentional about it. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Helen? Yeah, that's that's great. Wow. Again, I'm I'm just so enjoying this conversation. So many fantastic ideas. I love the idea of of a collective action every month through music um, in in all communities. Can you imagine? You know, if the whole of Indiana decided to do that, what what a difference that would make. Um, you know, I th there there are limitations, obviously, as well. I mean, what we normally do as musicians, especially acoustic music, is to be together physically and. Not being able to do that has been very traumatic for so many musicians mm -hmm. and so difficult for for just our culture and yet at the same time where there is challenge there are often as connie was mentioning you know an emergence of incredible innovation and activity in places that you would never have expected and for instance i'm just fascinated with what's going on on TikTok right now mm -hmm. i mean it is incredible to see this explosion of musical creativity happening in all areas, um, you know, with kids of my daughter's generation, just just basically um, emerging now as these amazing artists, mixing and matching and doing things that, you know, again, we would have never imagined, you know, five, 10 years ago. Um, and so in some ways I feel that we're learning to listen now in ways that we never thought possible before because we've been forced not to listen in ways that we normally think. Um, and so that's opening up some really interesting avenues of creativity and connection. The other thing that I think is interesting is that in popular culture, I think in many ways we have been making music um, in in games, in um, you know, in 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 popular culture. You know, in addition to TikTok, there are a lot of places where Bandcamp and places like that, where emerging generations have been mixing and matching and creating amazing music. So I think that there is. There's a proliferation of creativity going on right now, uh, perhaps not in the ways that we've been thinking about. And the other thing I want to just quickly say is that I feel that um, that music is probably one of the most uh, empathetic spaces mm -hmm. we could ever ever place ourselves as human beings because we are not we are not tied down to the sort of the tropes and the stories that we're telling and articulating through words. If you think of how how limited the uh, political uh, uh, um, tension seems to be right now, where we're just saying the same things over and over and over again. And people are saying the same things from both sides over and over again. They can't seem to get out of the, that trap. In many ways, I feel that our, our world, our, you know, the, the, the various parts of our world are already connecting through music in ways that they cannot through words or through just words. Um, and for that, I feel very, in a sense, optimistic about how we might be able to continue to evolve uh, and to develop our society through art and through music. I think it's um, just so, so meaningful and powerful. Oftentimes when I'm in class and someone says something very much along the lines of what Alan just said, I would say, if I didn't know better, I think that you were a plant. And by that, I don't mean a green leafy thing, but someone who makes the comment that is the perfect segue into the next question, <laughs> which is exactly what you just did. <laughs> and so you may have already provided the answer, but I want to give you a, a sense, chance to, to go ahead and elaborate because uh, my next question, Alan, is, is uh, how does music cultivate empathy? And so if there's any elaboration from that, I mean, that was yeah. a great, great pivot. I love it. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I'm happy that, yeah. 
you know, this is, I think, you know, all of us, all four of us on, on this conversation really have been thinking a lot about, about just this very thing. You know, what, what is music beyond the, um, the notes, beyond, beyond the sound, beyond the, the sort of beauty? Um, in, 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 within beauty, obviously, there's so much. And yet at the same time, music is a part of the human condition. You know, in some cultures around the world, the word music doesn't even exist because it is so immersed, it's so part of what they do. Um, and I've been really struck by that because I think that in, 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 in our sort of, in the world that we live in here, we think of music as separate, as special, as artistic, that many, that just a few people have access to, a few people can do. And we don't really think of it as being part of the human condition. Um, and I, I actually believe that if we were able to reverse that, if we were able to flip that in, in such a way that there was a deep recognition in our communities, in our personal life, and in our society, that artistry is integral to empathy, is integral to relating, um, and integral to, for that matter, entrepreneurship and innovation. The artistic mindset is a, is a phenomenal space in which people can do so much. Um, and so, I think that we have a great opportunity now to stand back and think about music in different ways than we perhaps have done for the past hundred years, where it's become a professionalized field available to just a few people. Okay. Connie, you want to take a crack at empathy in music? Sure. Gosh, great response, Alan. I love this idea that you're thinking of music as part of the human condition. Mm -hmm. um, in one of my classes, I, I posit a question about what music is in different societies. And I get many students saying, well, music is a universal language. And then I we kind of go from there. Okay, if it's a universal language, does it mean that if I play Mozart um, in a community that has never heard Mozart, it will mean the same thing that it means to me? No, it won't, right? But music as the universal language of ability to express oneself is another thing. And that's really, I think, the important part of this question. Music can take us to a different place. Um, it can transform our feelings, given the context. It won't necessarily transform our feelings all in the same way. It can create an empathetic response or a unifying response. And I think, you know, I have to at least mention that we have to be careful with that because whenever we talk about unification, it can be ambiguous and it can be, we can be unified in ways that are not necessarily positive. Um, but there's so much in this idea of how deeply it affects us. And I think if we were to go and look at physics and sound and sound waves, then we would start to get a little more of an idea of why it is part of, as Alain said, part of the human condition. Um, I very proudly talk about musicians as terrific out of the box thinkers, and that's part of that artistic mindset. But as you say, Alain, this is not just for musicians. This is about everyone. Everyone can be a part of that. Let's, it's really a great question. How does music cultivate empathy? But then what does empathy do for us? Oh my gosh, it's huge. And then also flip it and say, what is empathy in music? Yeah. Oh yes, well, there's a, that's a, we could talk for an hour about that. <laughs> but Carolyn, of course, is the special. Well, yes, and I, I think I'll, right I'll do a my book on empathy. I know. <laughs> oh, empathy, <laughs> yes, and these are all lovely, lovely, lovely answers. I'm just moved by what I am hearing today. But um, as you were talking, all of you, I was thinking of the Staples singer's song, I'll Take You There. Mm -hmm. And I like that song because it does tap into the whole notion of the blending of empathy and music. The thing that I love about empathy mixed with music is the idea that Music gives us an emotional way of imagining the other person's melodies, the other person's culture, and the other person's history. So it is a way 
of learning what it is like to sing by someone else's light. In my book on empathy, I say it is a, empathy is a way of learning what it is like to live by someone else's light. But here I want to say that empathy might be a way, and music is actually a way of allowing us to imagine what it would be like to live by and sing by someone else's light. So music gives us a kind of optimism for humanity by tapping into the wellsprings of human emotions. I, I really love the idea that music has that capacity. And it helps us to imagine what the soul of the other person might be. I mean, if we hear music, then we also hear all kinds of emotions. And music summons all kinds of content, does it not? And the music tells us stories about how other human beings live. So I love the idea of music stirring the imagination and taking us places where we would not dream of going. Um, as the staple singers would say, music can take us there, wherever there may happen to be. Great, great answers. Wow. Great. I have a, a final question for you. And Connie, since you've always been in the middle of all of these, I'm going to let you take the first crack at this as we don't do this. They're always number two as we go around. Oh, okay. uh, so the, 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 the final question, um, and I'll pose it as the formal question, but you're willing to take this to whatever direction that you want. Uh, but the question is, if you were to recommend to one of the viewers of this uh, uh, broadcast, one thing that they could do to overcome cultural divides and distances through music, what would it be? Or if there's anything that you just think would be important for them to know about this relation of, of, of music and, and cultural divides and overcoming them, you know, what would it be? So you know, feel free to not have to respond specifically to the question, but kind of what are your final thoughts of what's important for a viewer? Another great question, Tim. Terrific question. Uh, and I guess where I want to go is let's take advantage of this time that we are separated and yet connected virtually. Um, and I think if I were to be speaking to someone who said, gosh, I really like music, but you know, I don't have any outlets. I don't know what to do with it. I can't go to a concert. I might immediately say, you know, there are a lot of virtual choirs out there. Have you considered joining one? Um, so to join a virtual choir, you don't have to sing in front of anybody, right? You can just sing all by yourself, <laughs> but you can sing along. Uh, with them, or you could take a guitar lesson. So I guess I'm on that active side of it, that if we're going to dive deeply into our cultural roots, why not do it through our own creativity? I think that's a, a really wonderful tool that we have at our disposal right now. And of course, and I, <laughs> this is a funny one, but I will recommend that you get on YouTube, listen to something you think you like, and let it play. <laughs> Keep finding out what the next thing is. I have told my students sometimes it's 3 a.m. when I stop listening. But oh my gosh, what a, what a wealth of music we have at our disposal. And it's every kind. It's every culture. Um, you can hear throat singing with the Inuits. You can hear throat singing with the Tuvans. You can hear Australian Aborigines. You can hear just about everything on YouTube. And why not? This is a great time to discover that and, and to appreciate the power of that music. Okay. Carolyn, your thoughts on that? Well, I like the idea of lyrical bundling. The idea of carrying around with one a bundle of lyrics. And so when you encounter a person, a person has done something marvelous for you, you might just hand that person something that says, thank you for being a friend. Or if you have met somebody and they really made your day marvelous, you would just hand out a strip that says, happy day. Or if you are feeling even more static, you just hand out, what a wonderful world we live in. And so I would just love to just go from place to place, handing out these bundles of lyrics to make people's day um, a happier one. And I think we all probably could tell many stories if we had time of moments when we made people happy 
and moments when they made us happy, just by thoughtful, mindful things. And so it would be quite extraordinary to see what responses we would get if someone did something. It would always have to be lovely, right? Because we can't think of unlovely things, but, um, and just hand them something that will make their day in a lyrical way. I love that. I love that. Uh, Alan? Wow. Um, so, so I'm going to go where, where we've been in some ways throughout this conversation, which is the whole idea of empathy and, and how can you relate to something if you don't try it out, if you don't actually create it? So, so I'm going to su suggest that for me, um, in terms of my life, the most powerful ways that I've ever connected to music is trying it out. Y you know, and even if I've not tried out everything that I hear other people doing, obviously there's no way that I could approximate incredible music coming out of so many different cultures and people and artists, but just doing it um, makes you appreciate and makes you relate to and makes you empathize with so much more of what other people are doing. And I think that we've got ourselves stuck in some ways with this consumerist world that we're living in, where we think of music as an object that we, that we consume rather than something that we are in and that we relate to and that we create as we go along. So that's, that's the first thing is really, really important. The second I want to just mention is that, again, um, we're all talking very personally here. I feel that I've had this voyage in, as a musician, as an artist, as somebody appreciating music, of going either deeply within myself or traveling outside myself. And there's been this interesting um, thing of, of, of exploring the other, exploring other people, exploring African traditional music, and then going deep within myself in terms of my own sense of identity and the type of music that I am more closely connected to as a cultural being. And in some ways, there's no way that you know who you are unless you've been somewhere else so that you can return to yourself in some way. And so again, as a musician, I would say, try other people's music mm -hmm. um, so that when you return to yourself, you know yourself better. That's a great note to end, so to speak, to end on. Um, this has been a wonderful uh, interview with the three of you, and I thank you very much for being part of this. I'm sure that any viewer who's paid attention to this one is going to walk away with a lot of great ideas and insights. For those of you who are continuing on with it, with the vlog, uh, next month I have a tentative commitment from a winner of the Nobel Peace Prize um to talk about uh things so that'll be interesting he is an interesting guy i can't commit yet so i'm not going to say his name yet just in case <laughs> but, like it. but i think that that's pretty pretty certain and it's going to be on a subject that can be both uh, incendiary and connecting and that's religion um mm -hmm. and we'll be hearing from from him uh next month but for this month thank you again to everybody for for being here and um, I look forward to for next month's vlogs as well.